stay at home, limit social contacts, only go out if needed. Well, looks like they published the developer manifesto for all nations, right? What's up, Simonix? Welcome to a new vlog episode. Of course, I hope you take the corona crisis serious. Given my reach, I just want to say please uh, spread awareness for this issue. Even if you're of young age, everyone can contribute to making this crisis a little bit smaller. So please take your responsibilities and just stay at home. That's exactly what I do. And so I thought we could answer a few developer questions that I got over time on either YouTube or that I actually asked myself as well. While you're hopefully sitting at home and you're still healthy, let's go through a few questions for developers. <laughs> Question number one is, should I get a programming degree? Now talking about myself, I actually got a degree, but the things that we learned in that degree weren't really helpful for my career at all. Of course, I'm now doing something completely else, but also once I got my first programming job, basically 95% of the things that we learned in university weren't really helpful at all. The only thing that was helpful was um, learning some basics about programming and algorithms and then basically learning uh, some languages on my own because we learned Java in university and I didn't really like it back then and don't like it yet, but I learned uh, Swift, no, I learned Objective-C at that time. That brought me in my very first job. In general, I would say this really depends on where you wanna go. For example, if you wanna go into some sort of AI, machine learning, some scientific stuff, I really think that a certain degree is necessary to get into these jobs. But on the other hand, there are a bunch of jobs where you simply need to be a good developer and a degree isn't really a sign in my eyes for a good developer. I've seen developers with uh, degrees that weren't really good and I've seen others that studied something completely else and then took a boot camp or anything like this and just became great developers. Even if you apply at, I think, Facebook and Google, for certain positions, you don't need to have a degree. And if you can apply to these companies, there's also a variety of other companies, small and middle sized where you can definitely get a job even if you don't have a degree. So if you can afford it, if you think it's beneficial and if the degree is really related to what you wanna become, I think it's a good idea to go through it. Otherwise, if you don't have a degree and you're perhaps even uh, 30 plus now and you wanna to shift towards into programming, I think it's definitely 100% possible even without a degree related to this. Either take some boot camps, there are of course some boot camps that you should be cautious about that just want to make money off this new branch of people that want to get into programming. But on the other hand, uh, some boot camps are actually for free, there's a ton of free material outside, there are platforms like Udemy where you can just uh, get courses for really a small amount of money or the Ionic Academy where you can learn Ionic of course. And so I think in the near future a degree will actually have less value in most of the fields. If you can prove that you're a good developer, having perhaps a portfolio, uh, you're committing to open source projects, uh, you have published applications, websites, projects, then I think this is a bigger proof of your skills than actually just showing a certificate that you went three years to a university and perhaps studied just one night for the test. Question number two that I also asked myself years ago is, should I specialize as a software developer? Just like before, this can depend. So if you're of a young age, if you don't have a job and perhaps wanna get your first job, I think you should start by specializing because your skill level won't be too high in everything you do. So if you spread this small skill level across various things, then it will even become a much lower skill level. In the beginning, focus on one skill, one language, one framework, using the printer while recording videos. Also, if you wanna become something like a freelancer down the road, or uh, perhaps you just wanna to transition to it, it's a good idea to have one specific skill at which you are great. Building websites, building applications, building anything. Or just being great at WordPress or a certain technology. But otherwise, if you perhaps want to become something like an indie developer and you want to wear a lot of different hats, in that case, 
it completely makes sense to get a good amount of skills in a lot of different things. You have to be good at marketing, you have to be good at writing websites, perhaps even at graphic or sound design. So in that case, you have to be an all around talent. But in general, I would always recommend to first of all, specialize in one thing. Number three, am I qualified for a developer job? Now, you might have a degree from university and you feel like you can apply everywhere and then you see some job postings like this and you ask yourself, am I qualified for this job? I've been on both sides of the table. I tried to apply for jobs and I was also uh, hiring people at an old company. And when you see a posting like this, you have to be really careful because you don't have to cross off everything on that posting because sometimes these postings can get really out of hand and basically the whole office is uh, gathering skills that a cool developer might need and in the end they basically look like for three different positions and try to put everything into one position. So I would always approach postings like these and thinking about if I'm qualified based on the most important things. If I can cross off a few of the most important things and I perhaps have some of the additional uh, optional requirements or things that are nice to have, then I already feel good about this. You don't have to be scared by these postings and think you have to cross off really every item on this list. For a lot of postings that I've seen uh, inside the Ionic job board, there's also like help skills in uh, Ionic and React Native and native iOS and native Android development. I really don't know about a person who's an expert in all of these topics. I think if you're good in one, you have at least proven that you know about mobile apps and you can always transition into something else and learn on the job as you go. If you feel like you're not qualified for a job, perhaps you don't even have a, a huge portfolio yet, you're just getting started, then try to apply for the jobs where you have really the most important skills and perhaps if you see some similarities between the different job postings like knowing about Git or source control, knowing about continuous integration developments, these things are like fundamental things that you will see in a lot of postings. So try to get a solid basis of these things, become an expert in your one skill and then try to apply, talk to the people and you will see these people are actually also human beings. They want something from you. You have something to offer and you don't have to be intimidated by a huge job posting. Which also brings us kind of to question number four. Why is everyone a better programmer than me? It's not like this question is asked by only uh, beginning developers. It's actually something I ask myself regularly as well. I just have to browse on Twitter. I follow a few experts and if they post something and I am like, what is the answer to your question? I feel like I have never used JavaScript or any programming language in my life and I should know a lot more like these people. They know everything and I know shit about what they say. This is also known as kind of the imposter syndrome. It's not only tied to developers, it's basically everywhere. It's the fear that you're not good enough and at some point somebody will uh, see that you're really just no, not good. So what can you do about this? First of all, take a look at everything that you've already done. If you have some sort of Git repository, portfolio page, anything like this, you will see that you have hopefully already uh, completed some projects and you get better along these projects. Also, if you're starting out, you don't have to compare yourself to some developer that's perhaps already developing like 20 years. That might be more than you're on this earth, right? And just accept the fact that there will always be someone who's better at something who's gotten deeper into a certain language and just knows more. This doesn't mean by no means that you're a bad developer. Whenever I get these feelings, I just mostly get out of social media and just work on something like a video for you and I read the comments and I'm happy that I can help other people. You are not a bad developer if you have a certain amount of expertise. It might be just a few months or years but if you can build things, you don't have to feel bad. You can always get better, but feeling bad because other people are just better in something is no solution. 
um, at all. Final question, number five, do I have to stay a programmer forever? If you're working as a developer already for perhaps 10, 15, 20 years, you might have asked this question yourself. Or you're just starting out, you're super motivated and you think, where's the elevator to become the boss of this office? So developers have different aspirations. When I was younger, I tried to uh, climb the corporate ladder and to become a project manager or perhaps some sort of lead. But this is a different path than becoming a uh, software developer expert. For example, in that case, you could become a senior developer, perhaps you become a solution architect at some point, you become the lead engineer. So there are a lot of possibilities in your career to advance by completely staying a developer, just having a bit more responsibility. If you actually go up the other way, you will notice that in a few years you won't touch any code and I guess at some point you would be happy to be a developer once again. So there's a possibility for both. You can stay in programmer, you can just advance in your career, become a better expert, perhaps lead your team of developers and write really great applications and code. Or on the other hand, you might be able to transition into some kind of manager role at the end. And of course, just like you can become a developer at some point in your career by going through some boot camps, there's of course always the possibility to do something else. So I choose to become this kind of thing here uh, on YouTube. And that was my choice because I wanted to do more than just a developer. You can also become self-employed, a freelancer, an indie developer, anything like this, start your own company. Um, there are so many possibilities and feeling locked down into this programming thing and being a nerd and not going out. Of course, that's kind of good at the moment, but at some point it might feel to you like that's just not you and you want to do more. And just be sure there's always the possibility to transition to something else. I did it so you can do as well. All right, that's it for the week. I hope you enjoyed this quick kind of Q&A. If you got more questions like these about developer, career, anything like this, you know, let me know below the video. Also, of course, please hit the like button and stay subscribed. Click the bell icon so you always get notified in these dark times about new content. Once again, please take this corona crisis serious, spread awareness in your community if you can, or what I would actually prefer and also think about at the moment is using our developer skills to build something helpful. I don't know uh, about what to build right now, but I'm monitoring everything and I actually bounce off some ideas. So if you have some ideas to help your community, um, to help reduce the spread and to flatten the curve, hashtag flatten the curve, then definitely go ahead and do it. We developers can build tools, we can have an impact, so if you have any ideas about this, go ahead and just build it. I hope you're still healthy, I hope to see you healthy next week as well. I will do my best and stay the f at home. I hope you are gonna build something great this week. So, as always, have a great week of happy coding, Simon.